Um, so this question is a little bit more difficult, um, but uh, so much of our faith, sometimes it brings up uh, just naturally things that are contrary to the world, whether it's um, abortion or, um, and, and I'm not going to ask you to tackle any of these specifically, but just in general, um, how would you address those sensitive issues um, in a way that respects the children's innocence? as well as makes it so they're not like, what? I mean, there's a such thing as abortion or, cause I've had that where I've been teaching and I've been teaching middle school and I have no thought that, uh, they're old enough that I would have thought that they would have known what that is. And all of a sudden I'm like, what's abortion? And I'm left having to explain it. Um, and I feel a little guilty, but at the same token, uh, it's more of a shock that Given the number of kids that know it and the number that don't, it's a shock that this child doesn't know it. They've been so protected. Um, so how do you find that line and like how do you address those issues in a way that does re you know, preserve their innocence but also makes it so they understand what we're praying for when we pray for an end to abortion or to respect life in all its stages? Sure, yeah, well, I think first it starts with a witness to life in the family and a value of life. Like for us, you know, we've been blessed to have um, six children and with each child, they see the joy of a baby, you know, and that what a gift that child is to our family. And so we foster that and a love for babies. And I think every one of our children, even the youngest who doesn't have a younger sibling, um, love babies and um, see the joy that they bring. And then with that, you know, we'll just say that, um, you know, when it, comes to topics like abortion just that you know um we've just said that sometimes um people kill babies in mommy's tummies you know and that's really horrible who would ever want to do that you know so they um you know just in a sensitive way like obviously we wouldn't talk about that with our two-year-old but for the older children just saying that yeah it, it's hard you know and there's all sorts of things that go around that in our culture um but just knowing that every baby is valuable um, and that you want to treasure life and that they can't even imagine taking the life of a child <laughs> in this mother's home. Yeah, I mean, recall you know, the blessings of the baptism rite when the parents are, are called to be the first and foremost teacher of their children uh, in the faith and, and in other matters as well. And you're given special graces to do that. And so uh, taking on the role as mom and dad and, and praying for the grace to have those conversations with each child, often individually, um, at an age appropriate level. You know, there's things, you know, my 14 year old, our, our oldest child that we, we talk about now that we're not talking about with the, with the, the two year old, <laughs> the three year old. Um, and so it's something we've really prioritized just having, you know, we call it special time with each of the kids individually, where Patty or I will take out to the kids one on one and just enjoy time together, but also and create a forum for those conversations that are important to have um, as, as part of their own formation. But all in a way of showing, you know, ultimately, that all that is true, good, and beautiful is from God. And so, you know, helping them to see what we're called to do and realizing that we often fall short of that, but, you know, and anything that falls short of that is not of God. And so, you know, always pointing back to the source. Yeah, um, the Pop Checks have a really great resource in Beyond the Birds and the Bees. Um, but I think in the resources that I found really helpful show that it's really a culture you form. Um, you know that over their whole life like you're going to show them the value of life the theology of the body like god made us good and we're made as a gift of self and i think that emphasizing that we're made for others and as a gift of self you know so it helps in like the everyday things like okay it's time to do your chores but well, you're supposed to be serving others like that's what we're made for um and i think that you know if we aren't selfish but if we see we're doing things for others it really helps um in those difficult conversations because abortion is really choosing yourself over that baby you know but it helps to set a ground yeah. marker at a virtue foundation i think also when you talk about the gift of self it does also work very well into the whole idea of chastity just because um it's not just about you it's about like how are you going to serve the others around you and that leads into vocation and um as well so i thought that was really really good right yes yeah, so in a very positive way emphasizing that gift of self can help later on with those other topics yeah, yeah um, proud, we, we're made for god and we're made to serve each other for each other and so if you get those two principles down everything else kind of falls into place 
amazing how that works. Like the whole Ten Commandments <laughs> thing is actually You're like, right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, the guys thought of all that. <laughs> <laughs> we all fall short in these right. things, oh, so, yeah. but we know we know. Yeah. What and helping your kids. Is what yeah, I think that's the other thing. It's important to realize it's not a once and done. Like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. I told you the first of these, and we're done with that talk. You know, it's an ongoing um, formation. And as they develop and ask the questions, it's, it's knowing where your child's at, answering their questions. Um, and respecting, you know, their natural development, but you need to continue the conversation. Yeah. One thing I had read is answer simply. You don't have to give the big answer. You can just answer simply. If they have, if they want to know more, they will ask more, uh, which is right. I what I've suggested as well. Um, and something, something Patty has always been talking about, and, and, and it lives it, is always creating an environment for those conversations to take place. And there's a, a relationship with each of your children where you allow for those conversations. The flow is part of the normal interaction. That, nope, we're not going to talk about that one. No, no, that's not an option. <laughs> yeah, we, we have to be, you create an environment where, you know, you can ask me anything, we can be in, in dialogue. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably the hardest thing in general in our culture as people is listening. Um, it's taking the time to listen to your kids and that it's hard as a mom, you know, six, I, I find it hard to listen <laughs> sometimes, but if you listen to what's most important to them, then they're more willing to listen to you, but you need to listen first. Well, thank you so much. Um, are there any other parting pieces of wisdom that you would want to pass on to people who may be seeing this? a word of encouragement god gave you those children you and nobody else and so by virtue of baptism saying yes to having your kid baptized having saying yes to uh, raising your kid and the faith and being part of these religious education programs god bless you for that um, god called you that but he's going to give you the grace necessary to do that and so all you have to do is just keep saying yes and doing the best of your ability and following good teachers like karen here and just you'll it will be okay you know, god i'll be giving you what some you I'll give you, I'll be giving you some money for that one. Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're, you're welcome, sir. <laughs> <The chicks now. laughs> um, what about you, Patty? Yeah, just trusting God is so good. Like, he's so good. He's so faithful and he loves you so much. Um, and yeah, it's what a blessing he's given you this child. And you really can't screw up as long as you love him and stay close to him. <laughs> you know, like he'll give you everything you need. And we make all sorts of mistakes. Um, and we come from our own backgrounds and our own challenges. But no matter what, if you love him, he promised, you know, if you love him and are faithful to him, he'll give you all you need. So just trust him. Jesus, I trust in you. That's so beautiful. Um, well, I just, if there's anything um, else, families that I can help you with, you all have my contact information. And uh, thank you so much for listening. Bye.